Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create site analysis diagrams. This video will focus on creating site analysis diagrams in plan view and will be following on from the previous video on formatting Digimaps data that we downloaded from online and turned the OS raw data into a usable file within Rhino. Um, at the end of that video I talked about setting up line weights and hatch styles using these lines that we've identified and isolated in the Rhino file. And what I've done is I've set up on my layout page a small area that I want to be using to create smaller diagrams explaining some key aspects of the site. Now I'm going to be making the diagrams for these in Illustrator so we're going to be exporting out our drawing from Rhino into Illustrator to then work into and add those diagrammatic overlays and layers. The reason I've set this up in Rhino and done the line weights in Rhino is because I can be very um, specific with my scale of my drawing and this is set up at a 1 to 1000 scale, this frame here, and that means that that scale will be retained when I bring it into Illustrator and I can make sure that that kind of stays true throughout my drawings. Now I'm going to start by just right clicking on the site plan and printing this out as a PDF so I can bring it into Illustrator. By printing it I keep my line weights and my hatches which I've already set up which is useful for that. So we'll just print it as a PDF and save it as site plan. Then what I'm going to do is we're going to open up Illustrator. We're just going to locate that site plan and we're just going to drag and drop it into our Illustrator file there. So that's now opened up. Now you'll see that we've got this kind of frame which is coming on and we've also got, you can see the objects are sort of hidden behind the frame. And if we select that, this is actually what's called a clipping frame in Illustrator, which means it's kind of clipping off the rest of the objects, so it's just highlighting them in the frame. This is quite useful just so we can see it as a square that's been cropped, but can cause issues moving forward if we have multiple objects on the same layer that we want to show, which are kind of outside the boundaries of the clipping frame. So what I usually do is I'll start by just going Document Setup, Edit Artboards, and I'm just going to crop my artboard to that frame and you'll notice in Illustrator it will just snap to the edges of the frame when you get close to it there, like so. And then what we can do is if we select the frame, click up here on the clip group and go edit contents and then we just cut control X just to cut that and then paste back in place control shift V or edit paste in place and it will drop back in and we we'll, would have removed the clipping frame there and you can see the rest of the objects on the outside. Now these objects don't matter too much that they're on the outside because they're on the outside of our kind of group, our frame here, um, of our document in this case, of our artboard. Um, when we export this out as a drawing later on those would cut, get cut off and clip off from the frame so anything beyond that black line doesn't really matter we can just leave it there that's fine for now. Now, when you export in a printed drawing from Rhino, you'll notice that it comes in all on one layer. So what you might then want to do is split out some of the objects so they're on different layers. Because we've done these all as different sort of line types and groups, that's quite easy. Um, I did give a white hatch to all these areas, which I actually want to get rid of because we'll just use the white page for that. So if you select an object in Illustrator and just click on this Select Similar Objects icon at the top here, Make sure you're in Essentials Classics mode there, not just Essentials because you might not have those menus available otherwise. Um, yeah, click on the Select Similar Objects and it will select all the objects with the same properties as that. So in this case, any object of a white fill. And I'm just going to delete those off because we don't need those. Then I'm going to do the same for my blue hatch here. Select all of those, but I'm not going to delete them. I'm just going to cut them. So Edit, Cut or Control X make a new layer, call it hatch, and we're going to paste in place. So edit, paste in place to put that back on. Um, then I'm going to just lock that and we'll do hide it for now. We'll do the same with our sort of dark lines here. Cut, paste in place, and call this section line. And then I'm actually going to just drop these lines on that same layer as well. For that, I think for this diagram actually we don't really need those lines, so I'm going to get rid of those. And then this last one now is just my kind of road lines, so we'll call this road. 
keep those there. So there we have all our lines now nicely separated out. And then you can go around and if you want to, we can change the color of this hatch in Illustrator as well. So it allows us to kind of adjust that if needs be. Um, I think for the time being, let's make this just a gray color. I think. And we might go back and edit this later. But just for now, we'll keep it quite straightforward and we'll make it a light gray. So we've started now by splitting up our lines and we've got them on different layers. And we're going to have a go at making some sort of simple diagram overlays onto this. And this will kind of build up in complexity over the course of the video. So to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to start by just setting up a site boundary for this area. Um, I usually keep these layers on the bottom and then we can start to add on different layers on top. So let's just make this site boundary. And we'll just do a kind of red line boundary for this. Um, usually I'd use the pen tool for something like this. And we can set up a kind of stroke width. Let's do one point. We don't want a fill color for this line, but we do want a stroke color. So let's make it a red line there. And I'm just simply going to draw across an area where my site's going to be located. Very simply, just using the pen tool just to kind of connect the points up and work out exactly where I want my site to be. Now, obviously, you might have a kind of dictated site that you've been given or you've chosen, and this is how you'd go about selecting it. I'm just kind of randomly picking some points for this particular example. But let's say that this is the kind of constraints of my site here, like so. So let's say that's my site level. Now, as we have previously been looking at line weights and stuff, it's important with your site boundary that it's clear and visible. So I've made sure that it's on the top of my layers, so it kind of overlays on top of everything else. I'm also going to make this a dashed line just by going to the stroke panel here, clicking on dashed. And three point dash is usually a good starting point for a dashed line of this scale. And you might want to make it slightly thicker just so it's overlaying onto the section. You can then also go back. It might be now that this section line is a bit too thick. So we can select all these. And let's bring these down to a one point instead. That's looking a bit neater now. So very simply, just done a coloured outline to dictate where our site is. Now, something I quite like about Illustrator that you can use for this is we can set up multiple different diagrams on this board using multiple artboards. So if I unlock all these layers here and we go to Document Setup and Edit Artboards, what I can do is we can actually copy this artboard across just by holding down the Alt key. And you see we've got a double arrow icon that comes up there. And if I click and drag and hold down Shift as well, it will lock it horizontally we'll actually copy all those objects across onto a new board. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. So I'll just copy it across here. So we've now got four versions of that. What you'll notice is the layers stay the same. So my site boundary on all those artboards is on the same layer, as is my hatch, as is my section lines. So what this means is we can actually kind of edit stuff on multiple boundaries but keep the layers the same, multiple artboards and keep the layers the same. And this is really useful if you're setting up kind of multiple different diagrams that you want the same base layers too. So you'll also notice if I click on an artboard, the outline of it will go black, whereas if we're not selecting that artboard it will be grey. So this helps you kind of make sure you're working in each particular artboard there as well, which will come in handy later. Now we're going to have a go at identifying some kind of key elements of the site on each particular diagram. So let's say this first diagram here is talking about public space in relation to my site. So what I'm going to do is I want to actually colour in key areas of this diagram in relation to what's public space, what isn't public space. So what I'm going to do is we're going to make what's called a live paint group in Illustrator, which allows us to fill in colours in our drawing, which we can select. To do that, we need to sort of isolate all the lines together. So I'm going to unlock the section and unlock the road, but keep the hatch and the site boundary locked for now. And we're just going to, in this artboard, making sure I'm selecting this artboard, 
I'm going to just select all these lines like so. Try not to select any lines from the kind of artboard next to it. You want to make sure you're just in your artboard you're on. And we're going to copy those, Control C, and I'm going to make a new group, new layer at the bottom called Live Paint. Oops. Like so. I'm going to lock these two, and then we're just going to go Edit, Paste in Place on the Live Paint layer. And you'll see it's now just on this artboard too. So we've just paint, pasted that live paint on this particular artboard. Um, what I'm also going to do is actually no, we don't need to. That's fine. So once those are selected, we're going to give these lines, and we're going to make sure they don't have any thickness to them, because we're just going to be using this to colour in areas. We're not going to be using it to change any line ways. So we'll just make sure that my line type has got a question mark at the moment because we've got a mixture of two different line types here. We've got the section line and the elevation line. We're just going to click on this no line type to make sure it hasn't got a colour. And now with that selected we're going to go to the shape builder tool. If you hold down your cursor on this you'll find the live paint bucket tool which is just below. And then if we select our lines with the live paint bucket tool. Ah, so because we've still got a clipping path in here it won't let us turn this into a live paint yet. Now the reason for that is our outline here at the beginning was being used to clip our file so I'm just going to delete that outline. We'll just draw a new one out. Sometimes these objects kind of retain properties from Rhino which can mean that you won't be able to do certain functions like making a live paint object so just make sure that you might need to get rid of that clipping group, that outline, before you can turn it into a live paint. So there you go, I've just redrawn that out and let's try that again. So we'll select the lines, then go to our live paint bucket tool on the side, select that and just click anywhere in the middle of this group to make a live paint group. And you see here it says click to make live paint group. And once that's selected you'll see we can now paint in key cells of this drawing. So what that can then allow us to do is we can pick a colour Let's choose, let's say we want a kind of, maybe a green for this. You might already have a kind of project um, colour scheme set up, in which case you can take a colour from there. For this I'm just going to kind of pick a colour, let's make it a bit more muted actually. Like so, and we're just going to paint in some of the key areas of, let's say, public space in this instance. I mean I'm doing mine a bit randomly for this particular drawing but let's say it works something like this. These ones here maybe, maybe not that one. So and that could be our diagram talking about let's say key areas of public space in the building. You might want to also, it might be a kind of land use diagram let's say, so maybe you've got a light green for public space, maybe you've got a darker green for kind of park space or any areas of vegetation on your site plan, which we can fill in. And you can very easily just use this tool just to start to identify key bits of the site in that aspect. So maybe that's to do with the kind of greenery and public space in our diagram. Then what we can do is we can copy that live paint group. So I'm just going to copy it from this board, select this new board and we'll paste in place again on there. Um, let's get rid of the colour just by selecting the group and clicking on our none there to remove the colour. And maybe this one can be about the roads, so different types of road or transport networks. So let's say we've got a kind of dark orange for any main roads here. So these two coming through here. Like so. And I think that one's part road. This is a bit of the road as well. And then let's say we've got a kind of light yellow for pedestrian routes. So you can use the same sort of live paint group on all of these to help identify kind of key areas and we can just copy and paste that around 
and it's a very quick way to just start identifying key parts of your site and because we're using the same sort of base layer of our diagram we keep these same buildings our same site plan it's very easy to keep that consistency across all of our drawings so this one here this can be our kind of road network drawing and you might set up multiple ones of these explaining different parts of your site in relation to your kind of site proposal area and the buildings surrounding it as well. So it's a very quick and easy way of just starting to kind of colour up these pieces, add in that extra layer of information. On top of this, you might also want to add in some more diagrammatic elements as well. So maybe it's text or maybe it's kind of arrows showing different people movement and flow. For example, on this pedestrian diagram, let's say we've got an arrow. Let's call this labels there we could start to use our pen tool to set up sort of flows of people and how people move through the site. So maybe people come in from this side, walk through here and across the site in that direction. And just make sure you've got your line type set up. Let's give it a color. Let's make it a kind of dark orange to match these here. And we can make it a bit thicker this diagram we can give it a dash again be sure to sort of change the dash so it's not matching up with your site line dash just so it's easy to see the difference so you can see that orange one coming through there I'm actually going to make that a bit darker so we can see it more clearly and you can always add a kind of arrow hedge to it so we can give it a sort of basic arrow like so let's try these ones out maybe you want it going this way you can switch the arrow using this little icon here to just quickly the start and end and we can give it a kind of point to start at as well if you want so we can see that it's kind of going through the site that way sometimes these icons are a bit big in which case you can either lower your line weight to make them thinner or if you want to keep your line weight the same i'd remove let's say that dot is too big remove the dot at the end and we can just draw it out just using an ellipse tool here just to draw out a circle at the end of the line instead and match the colour up if you want to make it smaller. And remember, don't you don't want to go off the boundary of the page, so you might want to make it smaller like that. If, like in this case, I've got a bit of extra line, you want to edit that line. If you use the white cursor here, we can actually select a key point on the line, like so, and I can just drag it and snap it to the end there. So you can just edit single points on that line. But you can very easily start to add in these diagrammatic overlays onto the top of this as well to start building up those diagrams. So that was a quick introduction on how to import your diagram into Illustrator and then start to colour it up and add on different line works on the top of that. In the next video we're going to be looking at how to add in some shadow layers on top of this as well to start to create sun studies and diagrams that might kind of look at how the 3D model might influence the rest of your site as well. So thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you in the next video.